the 2023 Honda LPGA Thailand with Nelly Korda. Uh, Nelly, I know it's been a minute since you've been back here, but how excited are you to be back in Thailand? Um, played here a couple times before, and, and just how excited are you to be back? Yeah, super excited. I played in um, 17 and 18. Obviously, I think it got canceled in 19, so I haven't been back since. Um, I love this golf course. I've played pretty well out here. Um, I enjoy coming to Thailand. I like playing in hot weather, so. <laughs> Um, and also the people are very nice and it's a very enjoyable trip overseas. You've, uh, you've played well here um, the past two times that you've, you've played here. I mean, what is it about this golf course in particular that really shoots your eye? You said you like warm weather, but I mean, it's got to be the golf course, I'd imagine. Yeah, um, I feel like, you know, it's kind of like a birdie fest out here. You have to shoot a really low one to win. So obviously I think um, having um, length helps. Um, but yeah, I think uh, Bermuda on the greens, so I'm used to that growing up in Florida. Um, it's pretty grainy around the golf course as well, so again, I'm used to that. So I don't know, I, I like the layout. Um, I like the weather, <laughs> most importantly, um, and hopefully, you know, I can put together good four rounds this year as well. Does it feel like home with the humidity out there? Does it feel like Florida a little bit? <laughs> well. It's winter time in Florida right now, yeah, so it wasn't yeah. that hot. But yeah, I, I do enjoy the humidity and I like this type of weather. And I, I you kind of know, you know, growing up in humidity, what the ball does to it. So obviously um, a little bit of an advantage there. Um, saw you obviously at Hilton this year, um, but just, I mean, 2022, I know um, had its challenges, but you, you know, got back in the winter circle late last year, which was, I know was super exciting, especially getting a title defense too. I know that's always special, but yeah. just what are you taking away from 2022 and carrying with you into 2023 that, you know, new goals, anything that, that you're really thinking about this year? Um, to not take anything for granted. Um, you know, you, you never know what life is going to throw at you full of curveballs. So just to appreciate every single moment, you know, traveling overseas, like I'm doing this week, and I didn't do that last year, because I couldn't, so, um, yeah, I mean, the goal for 2023 is to stay healthy and um, to play the full year, um, and hopefully I can do that, so enjoying myself on and off the golf course is definitely a big uh, goal of mine this year. Any competition specific? I mean, everybody wants to win majors, everybody wants to get back to world number one, and I know yeah. you and Lydia have been kind of trading punches, but, mm -hmm. I mean, anything specific there? Not really. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the way I look at golf is I'm playing against a golf course. Um, it's different when it comes to, let's say, tennis, you're playing against an opponent. Obviously, you have typically 144 girls in a normal size field every week, you're playing against them, but at the end of the day, you're playing against a golf course, and none of the girls can influence you to play bad or play better, right? I mean, at the end of the day, it's nice when you're playing in a group that's playing well, and the momentum's there in a sense, but you're playing against a golf course, and um, we'll see how I play against the golf course this year. It's, it's a battle between me and the golf courses. <laughs> Love that. So any, do we have any questions in the room? Anyone? Okay, we will continue on. Um, I know early events, especially these two with no cut, kind of are a good kind of gauge of really what you've worked on in the off season. Yeah. Uh, what are you looking for from your game specifically this week? Well, I, I played four weeks ago in Orlando, so that was also a good kind of test. I didn't really have too much of an off season. I played two really cool events in December, and obviously the, the event in January at. Uh, uh, Hilton Tournament Champions was really, really fun as well. So just seeing where the game's at. I mean, obviously you kind of want to peek around the majors, around the big events, but um, it's a good test to see, you know, 
everything that kind of you've been working on in the off season, what you kind of need a tweak going into kind of like the big stretch in the summer. And, and speaking of that, I mean, how do you, especially these events early in the year, I mean, how do you manage your energy uh, and try to kind of keep everything in the tank for those events? Uh, I run into that event every, uh, into that problem every year, honestly. Every year is kind of different where, you know, I kind of burn myself throughout, um, in the middle of the year or towards the end. So making sure that um, I am taking the year on slowly in a sense and making sure that my body is 100% is a big goal of mine because last thing you want is a burnout physically or mentally. Mentally is typically the tougher one to get out of. That's when you kind of need a little bit more of a break. Absolutely. Um, but again, I mean, the goal this year is to just stay healthy 100% and not to overdo it in any aspect. And speaking of that, we have two team competitions this year. International Crown is back for the first time in, in five years, quite mm -hmm. a while, and then Solheim. Yeah. I mean, where, where do those events fit into your schedule? Are you, are you planning for, like, how do you plan kind of that energy management around those two events as well? Because they just add a, they throw a wrench in everything. Correct, yeah. Solheim is, the year of Solheim is tough because, again, I mean, if it's in the States, then it's much easier. Uh, last time I played Solheim, I... It was a wild year where I had to go to the Olympics. I, I went from Evian to Japan, Japan to um, the UK for another major. So I pretty much had three majors in a row. And then right after that, I had Solheim in Toledo. So just kind of managing your energy levels and the travel is gonna be tough, especially the year of International Crown. Obviously, if you make it onto the team, it's a big honor to represent your country alongside the other girls that um, that have made it as well. And then same thing with Solheim. It's um, such a cool experience. Again, it's such a great honor to represent your country and um, hopefully we bring the cup back this year. But yeah, managing the travel of it and your energy levels is a big key. And I feel like every year I'm kind of still learning. Just one more about Crown. I mean, I know that's an event that means a lot to the tour just because we don't really get to see a lot of our international friends in that team mm -hmm. format. I mean, how, just how special is that event, do you think, for this tour, and, and how much does it mean to be able to, you know, maybe play in another one this year? Yeah, I think it's it's such a cool and unique event. Um, I know, I don't remember last time it was held, I think in 18, um, in Korea, I think, as well. And my sister made the team, and she really enjoyed it and said it was a lot of fun playing against, you know, so many different countries, um, girls that would typically not get to play, obviously, Solheim Cup. So I think it's a really cool and fun and unique event that brings a lot of countries uh, in. Awesome. Do we have any questions in the room? All right. We'll okay. wrap it up with just one more fun one. Yep. Favorite Thai dish? I know, obviously, everybody talks about the food when we come here. Yeah. Are you a Thai food fan? Yeah. I mean, I've been crushing mango sticky rice. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've had it every day so far. I like pad thai as well. Um, I enjoy the Thai food, so can't go wrong with anything, I think. Well, good luck this week and Thank enjoy you. the makeup. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I will.